I did a video earlier on the disappearance of Brandon Swanson. Uh, basically, he left the college party to go home, uh, see his parents, and he disappeared. Oddly, he was on the phone with his dad. They were trying to reach each other when, yeah, he simply vanished. I had some crazy conspiracies to like explain what happened, but only theories. And it freaked me out, kind of. Like, disappearing in modern times with cell phones and GPS. And then, and then there's no answers. Like, I like it when I tell a story and then, and then we know. We know, it's all in a nice bow. You know, these ones really kind of freak me out. Well, here's another one <laughs> that's uh, equally, if not more, uh, puzzling. The disappearance of Brian Schaefer. Hi guys, Teddy Mulvey here, Notorious Crimes. Thanks for the support. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Leave a comment, tell us what you think. And thanks a lot, we really appreciate it. Stay safe. March 31st, 2006, Columbus, Ohio, downtown, Julie Brown, where all the happening is happening. So corny, we gotta start cutting this stuff out. Brian Schaefer and his dad Randy grab a bite at a local steakhouse. Randy and Brian were super close and were as much friends as they were family. Mom, Renee, she recently passed away from cancer. This, of course, hit both men hard, but they were going strong and trying to move on best they could. At dinner, the med school student looked knackered and his dad did mention it, but it was spring break and Brian's mates were going out for a couple of drinks. Come on, suck it up. A few pints, shots, wine, whatever's happening, just get out and have some fun. After dinner, Brian, true to his word, met up with Clint Florence at the Ugly Tuna Saluna. Not bad. From there, they do what a lot of young lads do. They bar hop, supposedly taking shots the whole time. I mean, Jesus, fellas, come. Shots at every, I mean. Good for you, yeah, man, do it up. They were gonna be doctors, and that's one profession with huge alcoholics in it that a lot of people don't talk about because you don't really want your doctor being out all night boozing it kind of a thing, but they do. The other profession of alcoholics that people don't like to talk about, anyone take a guess? Teachers. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Uh, yeah, teachers as well, again. So these two good looking soon to be doctors are getting smashed and having fun. I mean, I bet the arena district where they were bar hopping was hopping. Later, they run into Meredith Reed and head back to the first spot, the Ugly Tuna Saluna. They said, one last one and then I'm out. Oh geez, haven't we all said that one? Last one, this is my last one and I'm out. They arrived at the bar, everything was good. They were like, all right, one more drink and we're out. Drinks ordered, people mingling, talking, hanging out. It wasn't just one drink. And then Meredith and Reed, they're kind of like, oh damn, they're like, Wait. Like, where'd Brian go? Now, this is not unusual. It is hard to leave bars. Friends never let you just go. I lie about it. You know, you go to the bathroom and then you just dip out or you pretend to take a call. You're like, oh yeah, I got this call. And then you just right into the cab or you just dip out. Like if no one's looking, you just leave. And personally, I don't check my phone. When I dip out, I'm out, I get home, I pass out, see a later world, especially in college, maybe sometimes with a lady friend. That can happen as well. So really no alarms going off here, uh, but the two did look for him. Good friends. They look for him, they call him, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Bar closes, what do you do? You go home, sure, you go home. Brian's fine, he's a med student, he's tall, he's good looking. It's Columbus, you know? We're not in some Brazil or Colombia or something. So yeah, they go home, that's it. Brian's girlfriend, uh, she can't get a hold of him. His dad can't get a hold of him. A bit of red flags. Two days later, there's a trip to Miami, one where Brian and his girlfriend, Alexis Wagoner, were supposed to go, that does not happen. Police, of course, are then called. Real quick though, two days, 
Okay, so 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 he leaves the bar and then there's that trip to Miami and it's 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 two whole days. So your girlfriend is super cool with you not talking for two days? I mean, it was only when the flight happened that she went to the airport and then she freaks out. In college, I don't think I could have gone 10 hours, especially after a night out. My girlfriend would have been the police with her friends. How can you just take two days off? I mean, super cool girlfriend. Maybe I just date psychos, but I just, I just thought that was really weird that if that's your real girlfriend, she's just like, oh, I'm just gonna go to the airport. He's probably gonna meet me there. With no messages, 2000. Cool girlfriend, that's all I'm saying. The investigators uh, go right to the security cameras, uh, as, as you should. The cops see him and friends going into the Tuna Saluna and see him going outside, chatting it up. So he does go outside, I don't know, Siggy break or whatever, maybe chatting to some chicks, but then nothing, that's it. He goes off camera, back in there, and uh, that's it. The camera never sees him leaving. The cops do some really cool detective work and they actually count the people going in and out. They're thinking, hey, he could have spilt something on him. He could have maybe even taken someone's hat or whatever and like changed the way he looked. Nope, he never left. And you can see that the escalators are the only way like up and down out. He would have had to have been funneled into the escalators. That's where you go up to go in. That's where you go down to go out. That's it, except a back door. But that wasn't for customers. And it led to a construction site, okay? The building was not done yet. The bar and stuff was done, but there was still other construction that was going on. The back door did lead to that construction site. I'm thinking that too. I'm thinking that too. The cops looked at other security cameras in the area and came up empty. So the search was on. Door to door, search with dogs. This is why I'm doing the story. Absolutely nothing. That's crazy. His car, his apartment, all in order, all gravy, nothing. It freaks me out that there's not one clue, not someone they talked to at the bar, not someone who saw him do something. Definitely in college, I'm not seeing anybody. Like without just me being my friends, if someone died in a bar next to me and they were like, oh, did you see this guy? I'd be like, what, were my, my glasses even on? I, I'm not seeing nobody but my friend. His dad tried everything, as you would. Three weeks before this, his missus passes. This is his oldest son, his friend, a future doctor, handsome, bright, amazing guy, vanished. Dad even got a psychic. That's how desperate this guy is. And I don't blame him. I think psychics are stupid, but when it comes to a loved one like this, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably be hiring a psychic too if the cops can't help me out. His brothers bought equipment and searched near the river, like by themselves, because the psychic said that he'd be in the river. So even if the cops didn't, you know, didn't check it, they were like, we'll buy the equipment and go in. I mean, yeah, of course you do that. His buddy Clint, who he met and went out with, refused the lie detector test. Everyone else involved took one and passed. That's weird, super weird to me, super weird. Also, Brian's girlfriend would call his phone every night. I think it was close to a year before I stopped calling the phone. I think about a year after that was when I finally said, okay, I, I gotta stop. That's sad, super sad, super sad. I'm not gonna cry. Super sad. We call his phone every night. She would get the voicemail. Of course, it's like that movie thing where you just want to hear their voice and you just want to not cry when you're doing a YouTube video. One night it rang. It rang one night. It didn't go right to voicemail. Cops called it after, because of course she calls the cops. It rang again when the cops called. Nothing ever came from it. They couldn't really do anything to it. Derek, Brian's brother, was quoted saying, and I quote, I've always thought he definitely knows something, just won't come forward with it, end quote, referring to Clint. Damn, could be grabbing straws, right? You want an end to the story. So when there isn't an explanation, you search for an explanation. I know I do that. He refused a lie detector test. He lawyered, lawyered up pretty quickly. I found a picture of a homeless dude online that people say is Brian, but all white guys look the same, so I'm not really sure. Also, why pick homelessness 
when you're like two, three years away from like banking it at a hospital, being adored by everyone because you're a doctor. Maybe he didn't want to be a doctor. He did it right on MySpace. He wanted to be a musician. So what? So you, so you dip out, start a music career, your mom dies, so you dip out on what? Your brother and your dad, leaving them with that? The music career doesn't work out, so you're just homeless? You don't just phone home or go back home? Tough one to swallow, that one for me. Also, he didn't leave the bar. If he was just gonna dip out, he would've just walked out and left the bar, but he at least didn't leave the bar through the front door. Here it is, my crazy theory. The crazy theory is the back door, the construction site. It had to be more there. Just me, I'm not a psychiatrist or an investigator or anything. I'm just an idiot with an awesome YouTube channel. Subscribe. I just think there has to be more there. That, that just, to me, should have been full eyes on that. He could have gotten into a fight, the fight could have went too far. Maybe it's the Northeast American in me, but we always grow up as like in a construction site is where you hide a body. I just think I lived or lived close enough to New York and New Jersey where whether it happened or not, that's what we think is the place to go. So maybe there's a fight, there's a scuffle, he falls, he hits his head, something like that. They're like, oh no, oh, you know, what's going on? They bring him out back, dump him somewhere in the construction site. Yeah, still weird to swallow. I'm just trying to think, wouldn't there have been like, if you got into a fight with Clint, wouldn't Clint have had evidence of that happening? Maybe Clint saw it? I don't know, it's just weird, it's weird. Otherwise, how do you enter a bar and not leave it and then never be seen again, unless he was in the bar or in the basement or he's somewhere, he's somewhere. There it is again, that weird feeling. Well, I hate it, I hate it that you just don't. It's so much better when we put a bow on these things. What happened? What happened to Brian Schaefer? An almost doctor with what seemed to be everything going for him. Goes out after a night with dad. Meets friends, not even like randoms. Walks into a bar, walks out, talks to people, walks back in, and then gone. I hate it, I don't like it at all, and it's weird. He vanished in thin air, and to this day, nobody knows. Unless someone in the comments knows, because probably, or speculate. Clint seems shady, at least a little bit. He lured up fast and he cut ties with everybody. He cut ties with everyone Brian, around Brian, that's what I read. Shady, with a real slim shady, please stand up. And your name's Clint. Or he's really smart by doing all that shady stuff. Either way, this is the disappearance of Brian Schaefer. Ah, <laughs> man, it's weird, it's weird, it's weird. Thanks for watching, I'm Teddy, and this is Notorious Crimes.